let's let's talk Wait, about sacrifices. Question. The gentleman you see here with us, we don't often get to say this on the show. A lot of you might have voted for him. Joseph Diaguardi represented Westchester County for two terms in Congress. He is the author of Unaccountable Congress. Some would say that's redundant. <laughs> um, <laughs> a new so. book on uh, congressional spending, uh, and boy, does it come out at the ripe and right time. Although you've been out of Congress for almost five years now, but you Four saw years. the beginnings way back when. Can I give you a quote from your book and, and let you take off on it? Exploring the financial management of the U.S. government is very much like being blindfolded and lost in the New York subway. You don't know where you are, and you could fall off the edge at any moment. That's scary. Well, people remember when President Reagan took that huge budget, uh, you remember the budget document? It was about two feet yeah, high. Like they just stumped it uh, yeah. at the State of the Union. Some trillion amount of dollars, uh, right? It, it's very difficult to understand, even for someone trained like me for 22 years as a certified public accountant. And you were the first ever working certified public accountant to be elected to Congress. That's right, in 215 years, believe it. Everybody knows how to spend, very few not account. This so, is the problem. So you walk in and bells went off when you saw these fiscal irresponsibilities going well, on. I saw the double standard, and that's why in the book, one of the chapters is entitled, A House of Ill Repute, Do As I Say, Not As I Do. And we've got to change this double standard. For that's example, awesome. yeah, in layman's terms, I was going to say, give us a couple of glaring... Well, one glaring example is uh, doing things off budget. Now, if you were a businessman and a businesswoman and you uh, decided to do things off your books, uh, you could literally be indicted. But yet in government, half of the savings and loan bailout literally is off budget this year. It's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the graphic on the front of the book. We had it mm -hmm. up on the screen a minute ago. It is a congressional credit card, not mm -hmm. quite an American mm -hmm. Express card, but you have... I bought the real nice. culprit. I bought yeah. the real culprit. Explain listen. what this is. Okay, well, people, uh, many people don't realize that we vote with a plastic card in Congress. So when you mm -hmm. Let's just vote for your... Let's just hold it up the camera. This is shot of the uh, card here in Carl's hands. Used to use. Yeah. Go ahead, you were saying. When, when you vote for your congressman or congresswoman, you literally yeah. give them this mm -hmm. card, and you really empower them because while this is a voting card, it really is a credit card, a charge card, because every time we vote, since we have deficits, and we've had deficits now for 40 years, uh, what we're doing is we're increasing the national debt with this card because the Treasury has to get the money from someplace. If not your taxes, it's got to come from selling bonds. So literally, we're passing this debt on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's a credit card mentality, and it's almost approaching $4 trillion. Wow. You're, using the mo you're using our public trust and our money to say, on that card, this is what you're going to... That's exactly what you're saying. Yes, and I put this card on the cover of the book, a markup of it, where I said the credit line is unlimited, the expiration date is never, and we're billing it to future generations. Let me ask you something. When you arrive at the House of Representatives as a freshman, uh, we've got this House bank scandal in the news. Does anyone take you aside and say, look, if we've got a plan for you, it's like free money. You can overdraft. It's terrific. What happened? What, what was your experience with the bank? Well, frankly, that's not something that anyone focused on until the, uh, the Controller General put out some reports uh, in fact, they started about two or three years ago, so I was aware of this when I started writing the book yeah. three years ago. Uh, but literally, there's not much attention paid to the financial aspects of, of Congress. In fact, I've called for a chief financial officer for the United States Congress for that very reason. You can't put political patronage people in positions like that. What you're saying is it was a very, it's, it's almost an arrogance it is, a, of sorts though it sounds. The check kiting scandal to me, it's, that's what it said. Well, it's, it's certainly symbolic of the fact that how can you trust your legislators with the collective checkbook, which this year is one billion four hundred mm -hmm. Billion, one trillion, four hundred billion dollars. That's a T and a B. Yeah, uh, just, uh, when, they they can't, when they don't even look at their own checkbook, yeah. and they're writing checks in excess of the balances in their own books because they're not focusing on numbers. By the way, the congressman bounced no checks during his Absolutely. Absolutely. We God, just right. let them know that. Would an well. accountant actually bounce yeah, we, we hope not. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Joseph D. Water, we uh, thank you for uh, having, uh, has, spending some time with us. The book is Unaccountable Congress. Mm -hmm. and, Written uh, in terms that we can understand also, which I think is important for an accountant. Oh, so thank you. Accountant. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Ken. Nice great. I'm Joe DiOguardi. In Congress, they use this card to vote, but they've turned it into the most expensive credit card in the world, with no limit, and you get the bill. It's a ticking time bomb that cripples the economy, stops job creation, and will make us poor. I'm a certified public accountant to get spending under control and to stop this credit card madness that's costing us jobs and the American dream.
given the existing practice of cash basis budgeting and reporting, promises can be made without knowledge of their full cost. This creates an incentive for elected officials to curry favor with today's voters at the expense of tomorrow's taxpayers. This allows politicians to make promises without having to disclose how much they're really going to cost.